Hi, my name is Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to the digital art series here on PSD Touch Plus. Today we are going to talk about colors. In the previous tutorial we were talking about sketching and today I will also show you an example which is similar to sketching but now I'm going to use blocks of colors instead of lines. But before we get to that point I would like to talk a little bit about color theory. I don't want to give a lecture about the physics behind the colors because it's quite a complicated subject and I don't want to bore you with it. I just want to show you the important things that you need in Photoshop for digital painting. Obviously it's good to read uh, on this topic and um, to learn as much as possible about colors but uh, one thing for sure is it's good to know about the color wheel. Now even though we are using RGB uh, color mode on the computer which is red, green, blue, the basic colors in traditional painting are red, yellow and blue. And once we start to mix these colors together like red and yellow we'll get orange or yellow and blue we will get green or blue and red and we will get purple and so on and so forth when we have these second colors we can mix them with first colors or primary and secondary colors and then we will get this one in the middle which is the third level and we can go on and mix again the third with the second one or the third with the first one and after a while we will get a continuous flow between the colors and that will create the 360 degrees of the color wheel. In Photoshop if you have the brush tool selected and you press Ctrl Alt and Command together on the Mac or Ctrl Alt and Shift and then click you will get the color wheel this is called the heads up display and here you can see this wheel so starting from red it goes to yellow then green then blue then magenta purple and then we come back to red so this is the circle that we see also in the background and there is another tool in Photoshop CS5 called the mixer brush by the way this heads up display only works in CS5 and there's another tool this mixer brush tool which is also useful and I'm going to use this in uh, most of the tutorials in this series so uh, let me just pick a color the red color from here from the top and I draw a part here then I pick another one this yellow color and I draw next to the red color I zoom closer and I use the mixer brush and I start mixing these colors together and you will start to see the orange color between the two. So once they are mixed together, you can see in the middle we start to see the orange color. The same applies to all the other colors on the color wheel and basically this is what we call hue. So this is the hue of the color and there are two other properties of a color usually we refer to them as saturation and brightness or lightness. HSB is the abbreviation here in Photoshop which is hue, saturation, brightness. If you click on a color you can see HSB here and hue is represented with a degree. Now if we are in the color picker we can see that the hue is actually here on the right and it's not a wheel it's a column but it does the same thing so it starts with red ends with red and between the two we have all the other colors from the color wheel and the saturation is the second value which shows the percentage of the intensity of the color so the highest saturation he is here on the right side while the lower saturation is here on the left side. I can go up and down, that doesn't change the saturation, it only changes the brightness. If these are coordinates then the Y value is the brightness and the X value is the saturation. So on the top right corner we have the most saturated and most bright color. This is a good thing to know and 
If I go to another image, I've set up a hue saturation adjustment layer and I also use the mask, I just alt click on this mask to show you that I use the mask just to hide details on the skin colors and if I start changing the hue on the adjustment layer that will affect everything apart from the skin colors. The reason why I would like to do this is it's something like an experiment just to show you that changing the colors can really change the whole image. Even though we are not changing the details, we are just changing the colors, it will completely change the mood and the atmosphere of the whole image. So let me first go to the left and I start changing the colors. You see we went already to a more cyan, magenta, purple colors. I go further, now we have more greens. And then I reach the end where we have also more yellows and, and greens together. So as you can see, before and after it's a big difference. Let me clo uh, zoom closer again, before and after. Okay, let me go to the other side of the color wheel. So we went one way, now I'm going to the other way. First of all we see these orange colors showing up and then we reach the same destination that we had previously. Now in the hue saturation adjustment layer we can do another experiment. If we turn on colorize then we will turn all the colors into a specific color. This is a monochrome effect. So again apart from the skin colors we turn everything into a specific color. And let me go again to the left changing everything first like to yellow then brown and then we reach red and we can go the other way blue purple and again we reach red and with saturation we can also change the intensity of the colors so once again with a bit higher saturation I go through the whole color wheel and you can see how the colors can affect the whole look on the image. Whenever you start a painting it's good to decide a color theme and try to follow that theme. You can use complementary colors to create contrast and to create interesting lighting effects or you can use very similar colors to create a monochromatic mood on your image. I would like to show you a couple of photographs. These are my photographs and it's always good to learn from photographs how to use colors and how to achieve a specific atmosphere. And I use labels just to quickly show you a couple of examples. First of all these warm red and yellow colors. I show you a couple of examples. Uh, it's just as an inspiration to help you uh, see how colors define mood and atmosphere on an image. So these colors always gives us warmth and uh, it usually it, it represents the sun and then on the opposite we have blue color which is more of a cold color and uh, as you can see here we have blue and green. On this one we have definitely a cold uh, example. Again blue and green together. Okay, then let me show you green examples. So these photographs are dominated by green which again gives uh, the image a special mood and atmosphere and let me show you finally a couple of images which are mainly like brown a dark yellow and green colors or maybe even some kind of purple colors in the sky in this one so you can see that colors are really important we talked about composition but whenever you create an image you also need to think about colors. 
I would like to select an image and I would like to show you how I would quickly create the foundation of a painting using selected colors from a photograph. So let me just open this image up in Photoshop, okay? And I'm going to make this smaller. I just create a white background and I make the image smaller. And then I'm going to speed up the workflow from now. But what you will see is that I'm going to start selecting colors from the image with the, the color picker tool. If you have the brush tool selected, you can use the Alt holding down Alt or Option key. You can click on the image on a point and then you start drawing with that color. That way you can create a little palette of colors that you can then use uh, to create your painting. If you keep these on a separate layer, then it's easy to turn them on and off or move them around. So let me show you this again. If I hold down Alt and I click on the image, I can see the selected color. Let's say I select a color from here and I use it on my uh, palette. But then I would like to select another similar color, but a bit brighter one. Again, if I hold down Alt and click, you can see on the color picker in CS5, we have a very useful option that shows us the previously selected color. So the actually uh, the selected color that I have selected now. And then on the top, we see the one that I'm going to select. So I can easily see now I selected a similar color, but a bit brighter one. If I want to again select something similar but brighter, I just keep on doing it. And now I have these three colors selected from the image. Remember, you can also use the mixer brush to mix these together. And then you even have a gradient, more like a gradient between these colors. So you can select not just the colors themselves, but also a mix of the colors. This is exactly the same thing as mixing colors on the palette with a knife when you're working with oil on the canvas. So as I said, I'm going to pick colors, create my color palette, and then I'm going to start and quickly paint the foundation, the color foundation of this uh, image. So let's get started. So here I'm selecting the colors already from the image. As I said, it's a, a faster version of the recording. So uh, this is my palette. I picked several uh, colors and I'm keeping it on a separate layer. And below this on another layer, I'm already started uh, using these colors for the image. And uh, while I'm drawing, I have it on my, uh, I, I work with two screens and on one screen I'm uh, painting and on the other screen I keep the image, the reference. And so this is the way I work. And you can see that I'm just blocking uh, these colors. So use big blocks of colors. I'm not really concentrating on small details. I just want to get that overall feel and it's always good to squint with your eyes um, which blurs the photograph and you can focus more on the colors, uh, the color detail rather than the, the uh, small details in the image. Okay, so I'm now working a bit on the water. I try to create that uh, reflection effect by using 30% uh, opacity with the same colors. And now I got rid of the color palette and I blurred the image with a Gaussian blur filter. And now I'm starting drawing over this again. This blur is just mainly to uh, get the colors blended together a bit more. I'm using the same colors, but I'm also alter uh, them a bit. So I make them a bit darker or brighter or change the saturation on them. Maybe even change the hue a bit. Um, I'm now mainly defining the uh, shadows. So the dark details and also the highlights. As you can see, I add dark and uh, bright details. 
these are very important so uh, we will talk more about light uh, later on um, and that's one of the most important things to learn to use because light uh, defines the shapes so without light you don't have form and uh, it's, it's the same with colors so that's why it's really important to learn to work with colors so the image is already starting to uh, come together now that I'm uh, defining a bit the details okay so I'm building up again dark details and bright details and now I'm going to use uh, the blue from the sky I just use the uh, transparent uh, like 20% opacity uh, and use the blue color from the sky and I just drew over the trees and now I'm again defining details I was drawing uh, the lake the water I'm drawing a couple of uh, rock details and uh, bushes again I'm trying to keep the reflection realistic but at the same time I'm working on these little details and I try to get uh, get to the same detail level on the whole image so I, I don't like spending too much time on a specific area I like to bring the details together so keep them roughly on the same level I'm blending with the with the mixer brush some of the colors on the on the lake and now I'm adding a couple of more highlights on the image and I won't finish the whole painting maybe in a later tutorial I show uh, the finished version of this painting but uh, for now this is all what I wanted to show and uh, I think this is a good example that using a couple of colors uh, from a painting or from a, from a photograph, a reference, you can quickly create the foundation of a painting. If I will continue uh, refining this painting, we, we can create easily a photorealistic uh, digital painting from this. But once again, most important thing was here uh, to select uh, the colors and to create a color theme uh, with the palette that I just created at the beginning. In this series obviously we will talk more about colors and uh, in uh, later tutorials I will tell you more about how to work with colors but this is a foundation this is these are the essential things that you need to know uh, to properly work with colors and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and also I hope that you will join me next week uh, when we are going to talk about perspective and scale so I will tell you how to work with vanishing point we will use a couple of 3d shapes as well in Photoshop and we will learn what does one point and two point and three point perspective mean so thanks a lot for your attention today and see you next time